It has been two years since the last American troops left Afghanistan and the Taliban took control of the country. Today, the United States is still struggling to protect civilians who supported America's fight against the Taliban for all those years. A new government watchdog report finds that the backlog in the special immigrant visa program will not improve and there are no plans for a significant uh, boost of resources. That means that thousands of Afghan civilians and their families who stood fearlessly, it must be said, alongside U.S troops will remain stuck in limbo. CNN anchor Jake Tapper joins us now. Jake, uh, today on The Lead, you're going to be talking about this and also new reporting on the families who lost their loved ones uh, at Abbey Gate during that chaotic withdrawal two years ago. That's right. Uh, earlier this week, there was a, a hearing on Capitol Hill. It was during um, a lot of the hurricane coverage, so it didn't get as much uh, coverage as it deserved. Uh, Thirteen uh, Gold Star families who lost uh, loved ones um, at Abbey Gate two years ago uh, with some very tough questions for the administration and not just general questions about accountability, but more specific ones uh, uh, based on some questions that have come from congressional testimony uh, and also from reporting. Uh, so today on The Lead, we're going to take a look at two of those questions and try to get answers based on uh, documents and interviews that we've done. So it's less about the withdrawal itself. And, and, and specifically about this incident and, and why well, I'll tell you the two, I'll, I'll tell you the two questions. This is, one of them is, uh, according to testimony from one Marine sniper who was uh, grievously wounded, uh, he had in his sights uh, someone who matched the description, a description of the suicide bomber that they'd gotten. And he, was, he, he says he was not given permission to engage with that individual. Um, what is the truth behind that? What are the claims behind that? What... what uh, was the description of the individual? What do other Marines have to say about it? What is the administration's response to it? The other one has to do uh, with some uh, a briefing that's contained in one of the Pentagon's investigations in which an individual claims that before the bombing, a couple days before, I think, uh, ISIS Khorasan, the group that later uh, claimed credit for the suicide bombing, um, was known to have had a, a staging area at a hotel a few miles away from Abbey Gate. And according to this one individual, uh, the U.S. knew about it, uh, asked the Taliban to take it out, and the Taliban uh, declined to do so. We'll be diving into that as well, trying to get to the, get to the root of that. It, it's been two years, but those scenes are, are still so fresh. Uh, they really do stick with you, and obviously particularly tra tragic that these 13 lives were lost at the very last moment of America's presence uh, in Afghanistan. And this is the definition of journalism. These are people who feel powerless, and they have questions, and we are giving voice to them and trying to get some answers on their behalf. Yeah, it, 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 really looking forward to seeing it. Thanks so much for doing Thanks that. Thanks so much. Jake. Appreciate it. Plus, two years has gone by, and where are we? To be frank, we're knee deep in bullshit. Is it so hard to get answers from the president and top military leaders? In our national lead, emotional pleas this week for help for information and, and very simply for the truth. These pleas come from people who deserve everyone's respect and compassion, families who lost sons and daughters and spouses in the terrorist suicide bombing at Abbey Gate in the Kabul airport in Afghanistan. This happened on August 26, 2021, roughly two years ago, and you may remember it killed the suicide bombing uh, 11 U.S. Marines, one Navy corpsman and one soldier, along with more than 170 Afghan civilians. 45 U.S. service members, furthermore, were wounded in the attack, some of them grievously. It was the deadliest day for U.S. troops in Afghanistan in roughly a decade, and it came during the frenzied, chaotic U.S. withdrawal. As service members were working to evacuate civilians and others at the airport this week. Many of those Gold Star families brought some pointed questions to Washington, D.C., and we wanted to try to help them get some answers. Two years has gone by, and where are we? To be frank, we're knee deep in bullshit. An emotional hearing on Capitol Hill with testimony from Gold Star families of the 13 service members killed in the Abbey Gate bombing in Kabul two years ago. There was understandable anger. I identify as a father, a husband, a pissed off, fed up American patriot, and now thanks to this administration, a Gold Star dad. And passion. I wanna know why this current administration isn't able to take responsibility for their actions in the days, the weeks, and the months leading up to this fatal, fateful day. 
Why were they ignored? Some of the families pointing to previous testimony given by another Marine who was on the same mission. Marine Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews, who said he and other Marines believe they saw a man who fit the description of the suicide bomber, but had been denied permission to engage him. We asked him for engagement authority and permission. We asked him if we could shoot. Our battalion commander said, and I quote, plain and simple, we were ignored. Our expertise was disregarded. No one was held accountable for our safety. How much did the Marines know about the pending attacker? A review of witness testimonies from a Pentagon investigation reveals conflicting recollections. One saying, quote, all of the Marines on the ground were aware of the threat and what to look for, a man dressed in black with a shaved head. Another saying, occasionally Marines would say a guy is matching the description and look suspicious. You would go look at the guy and think, maybe. A third saying, quote, it's possible we saw him, but we don't have a solid description of who he was. It's all speculation. Marine Tristan Hirsch also told his local newspaper, quote, we knew about him two days prior to the attack. We knew what he looked like. The CIA let us know. He looked exactly as they described him. CNN could not get in touch with Hirsch. How solid was the U.S. intelligence? CNN sought to get some of those answers this week. Marine Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews has testified that Marine snipers at Abbey Gate spotted someone who they said match the description of the sui of a suicide bomber but were denied permission from their superiors to engage the threat do you know why it was a uh, uh, a very challenging situation military commanders on the ground in afghanistan made the best decisions and provided their best military advice based on what was known at the time another looming question whether u.s intelligence knew of an isis k cell staging ground at a nearby hotel but either was not given permission to strike them or ask the Taliban to do so, and they did not. ISIS-K later claimed responsibility for the attack on Abbey Gate. You're telling me that we couldn't have precision dropped on those ISIS-K members? This was all actionable intel that we sat on. Nothing was done. Why? A new book by one of the Republican committee staffers on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, journalist Jerry Dunleavy, notes that in two different Pentagon reports, U.S. intelligence wanted to strike the hotel, but, quote, determined it was infeasible due to the negative response from the Taliban. Another says General Chris Donahue also asked the Taliban to conduct an assault on the hotel where ISIS-K was staged, but the Taliban never did. General Frank McKenzie denied these claims at a Senate Armed Service hearing in September 2021. General McKenzie, is it true that U.S. forces had the ISIS case cell uh, under surveillance prior to August 26 and could have struck them before the deadly terrorist attacks at Kabul, but were not given the authority to strike? No, that's not true. This week, CNN followed up. It was said military officials were denied permission two days before the Abbey Gate attack to conduct an airstrike against an ISIS case cell in Afghanistan. To your knowledge, is that true, and why were they denied, if so? At the tactical level, uh, the assessment was that the Abbey Gate attack was not preventable without degrading the mission to maximize the number of evacuees, and that the leaders on the ground followed proper measures and procedures. Shortly before the hearing with Gold Star families, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, put out a statement saying in part, quote, We owe Gold Star families everything. We owe them transparency. We owe them honesty. We owe them accountability. We owe them the truth about what happened to their loved ones. They are sons and daughters, brothers and sisters that were pawns in some agenda. And we deserve some information and collaboration from all political parties. Now, for the last couple of days, we've been reaching out to the Biden administration to get reaction and for a guest, anyone who would be willing to answer some of the questions uh, that we posed in this piece on camera. Uh, they declined, but minutes ago, the Pentagon did give us an extensive statement, too long to read the whole thing right now. We will put it all on CNN.com. But here's the bottom line, according to the statement on, on whether snipers could have taken out the suspected bomber, the Pentagon says on the record, quote, we did not have intelligence that identified an individual by description or otherwise of the bomber. On the second question we raised here, the allegation that there was an airstrike denied on a specific ISIS-K staging ground at a hotel not far from uh, the airport, the Pentagon statement says, quote, according to the commanders in Kabul, there were not any vetted strike targets denied. We just never had that precise intelligence. It is accurate that we did ask the Taliban to raid or search several areas. They searched some and did not search others, unquote. We will continue to press for answers on these questions. Let us turn now to Alicia Lopez. Her son, U.S. Marine Corps Corporal Hunter Lopez, uh, is among the 13 service members uh, who were killed in the bombing. First of all, 
Uh, Ms. Lopez, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell us uh, about your son. What, what, what do you want our viewers to know about him? Um, thank you, for, first of all, for having me, Jake. I appreciate your time in, in telling our children's story. Um, my son, as well as the other 12, are nothing short but heroes. Um, they went out there and uh, did their job and did their job knowing that there was a intimate danger and they still continued to try to get as many people out of Afghanistan as, as much as they could. The, the Pentagon statement about these two questions that we raised that were brought up in the hearing uh, earlier this week um, uh, among Gold Star families, the Pentagon statement seemed to suggest uh, that there was not any actionable intelligence when it came to the suicide bomber uh, in order for a sniper to, to get him, to take him out before the bombing, and uh, that there was not any vetted intelligence that would have merited uh, an airstrike on that hotel. Uh, so that's their basic answer. And I'm, I'm wondering what you think about that and if you heard anything uh, new in, in what the Pentagon sent us today. Um, I, this is the first I hear that the Pentagon even responded, um, but it just happened. I agree with you. I, it just happened minutes ago. We'll put the whole statement on, but you're right. They have never more this directly addressed these two questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, if their statement that they released today is anything like the DOD report that we received at our homes, um, it's short of accurate information. Um, they failed to speak with people that were there, um, important people like Sergeant Tyler Vargas, who had uh, his the bomber in his sights and they did not speak with him. There were several Marines that were injured that were not spoken to. So um, their, their statements that they released is is short of incomplete and not correct and it's been two years and so i i don't really believe them you and your husband attended the round table that uh, congressman michael mccall uh the chairman of the house foreign relations committee held last month uh, what answers were you looking for there and have you gotten any answers at all since then um sadly we have not received any answers um we have requested uh, true accountability and validation of the stories that the Marines that were injured and that were there um, have told us. Um, we've requested numerous times to have my son's property returned to us. Uh, that again has been ignored and they have not turned that or given that to us. Um, just accurate statements of where my child was at the time of the bombing, um, where he took his last breath, um, all that, we have no information on any of that. I wanna play something that your husband said during the August round table. We find ourselves reading sanitized letters from the White House on this anniversary of this tra tragic day. Letters seemingly authored to appease Gold Star families with an overall tone of indifference to not only Gold Star families, but to all the veterans who fought in Afghanistan and all who were injured during these two decades of war. It sounds like you feel as though, or your husband feels as though the, the Biden administration would rather just forget all about Afghanistan and, and the pain uh, caused by what happened during the withdrawal. Uh, absolutely. We we have requested numerous times to speak with somebody from the White House, the president, anybody that was there and that made the decisions that they made. Um, however, none of them have responded to our invitation. Um, we, again, we sit with, with reports that they came to our house and, and said that this was a true and accurate state, uh, investigation of what happened and it's false, it's false short from the actual truth. 